Welcome everyone, this is Zon with Repo Products. Today's video is on a request by an end user. Uh, they requested to take a look at creating a video for cross bracing in structure for Revit. Uh, here I am in Revit 2019 and I have a default structural project created. I'm on level two. If I head over to the structure tab, I'll go ahead and I'll place some columns. The default project gives you a couple of columns to work with. And don't forget when you place it, uh, look in the options toolbar and verify that you're choosing depth or height depending on what you're trying to build. So in this case, you know, placing it for depth is fine. We'll switch our visual style and our level of detail to fine and shaded so it's a little easier to see. And then I'll place a beam as well, just so we have some context. Uh, for the frame of the building. Now, if you do switch to course, you'll notice that your beam is just a simple line and the columns are just simple line work. So if you switch it to medium or fine, it'll look a little nicer. Plus, since I shaded it, you can see how it changes the visual display. Now, when we talk about doing cross bracing for an elevation, a lot of people will head over to the view tab and use the elevation command you can do so, but it would be easier and it would make more logical sense if you do the framing elevation. When you do this, it actually looks at the grid line. And if you don't have a grid line, you'll see the command is not popping up. So in this case, we need to place a grid line. We'll head over to the architecture or structure tab, start a grid line, and I'll just place one right here. And then I can select it and pull it across. And also switch the level of um, scale to something a little smaller so it's not so huge. And now if we go ahead and create that framing elevation, you can see that it'll attach itself to that grid line. So it, once you place it and you finish the command, that elevation blue line that you see that pops up when you select the arrow shows up and it's actually on the grid line and attaches itself to the grid line at the ends where the columns intersect and then it goes so deep to be able to see through and past that beam. So we'll head over to that elevation and you'll see it actually categorizes it as framing elevation over here in the project browser. Let's switch this again to a level of detail of medium or fine and we'll shade it. <clears throat> also change your crop region so it, you can see everything you need to see because again like I said the ends of the blue lines only go to the center of the columns where the uh, it intersects at the column grid lines so it, it kind of doesn't show all the column. So once you set your resolution and your display the way you want you can now start doing cross bracing. Head over to the structure tab of the ribbon. In the structure panel they have the bracing command. When you start this command head over to the type selector in the project browser and you can see you have all of those beams again. If you need a different size or a different type, you'll need to load it. So head over to Load Family in the contextual tab of the ribbon. And then it'll take you to the US Imperial Library since I installed this as Imperial. You may be metric or whatever, but head over and look for structural framing. And once you find structural framing, open that up and look for the material type that you want, let's say for example steel. And then if you set your visual um, display to thumbnail, you can get a picture, visual, you know, little icons to see what they look like. So if we want to do just something really simple and basic, say um, hollow structural HSS as our cross bracing, we select it, we hit open, and you'll get your types catalog window that you can resize and reposition. And just pick the size that you need. There's a ton of them in here. So unfortunately, I'm not a structure engineer, so I, I don't know exactly what size would be appropriate for something like this, but I'm just going to pick one for now. The principle is the same, so you can pick one. If you hold shift and pick another one, it grabs everything in between. If you pick one and hold control, it just picks the ones that you select. Click OK. They get loaded. Head over back to the type selector. You'll see it'll be current and then you just pick the size you want. Now that you've done this, when you draw it in elevation, make sure you are using the snapping tools to snap to the ends of the column 
here because if you don't um, it may draw it a little strange it may be um, touching something else that's in the background of the uh, model that you may not realize and you may end up drawing cross bracing at a weird angle so uh, I did pick something fairly large so let's say for example if I select both of them we can switch them out to something else. Let's go back to that. Uh, we'll just do the W10, 8 by 10. And if I take a look at this in 3D, you've got cross bracing. And again, I'll shade it. And this is the result. <clears throat> Let's head back over to the elevation. If necessary, you can select the beams and you can use these arrows here to control the length of those um, cross bracing beams. And basically, what you're doing is you're affecting the start and the end join cutbacks. So if you know what those measurements are, say for example a foot and minus a foot, then you'll see it adjust accordingly. If you need to create the steel connection, like a gusset plate, you either do it via custom or do it via steel connections. Um, and you know Revit does have steel connection capability right here. And if you need to adjust that and try to work with it, you'll have to set up the capability to do so. In other words, load all the database library family files that attribute to this member and this member, and then it'll build it. Um, and so back over here, this one, again, we need to readjust this as well. So we'll make that a foot. And you can see it, it gets adjusted. So that's how you draw cross bracing in Revit. Thank you very much for watching.